Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Carlos Elis, medical doctor. I specialize in regenerative medicine. So I would like to discuss a very exciting area of regenerative medicine. I used to kind of call myself anti-aging doctor, but I really started thinking about it. What I'm really after is regeneration. If we can regenerate our different body parts uh, and have our injured parts that go bad, we put new ones in or we regenerate let's say autoimmune problems in our system or not or like lupus or heart problems like you know part, part of your also you have a heart attack well you don't die but part of your heart dies and you have congestive heart failure you got millions of people Americans with this problem and they're the pumping action is not there so what how are you gonna put it how are you gonna make that pump work again well you have to either use something mechanical there's chemical or the new thing is to use your own stem cells now in order to get to this point let's separate out the two really uh, issues between embryonic on one side and adult autologous stem cells. Embryonic means the one you've heard about in the news. We actually take people who are trying to get pregnant, they'll take a sperm and egg, put it together, then they'll let, let that little embryo grow until it's about five divisions, then they'll extract cells out of it. And these cells have potential to produce any cell in the body. So then you've got embryonic stem cells. Well, we're not talking about that. So there's no political, religious issue involved in saying, if I, I want to use my own stem cells and put them back in my body at a later, at, at a later time, in time of need, illness, injury, and so on. So by doing this, I don't have the problem of rejection either if I'm using my own stem cells. Let me go back to 1960. In 1960, or the 60s, I was in, in the late 60s in medical school at the University of Washington in Seattle. And I remember very clearly we, there were patients in the hospital uh, who were having bone marrow transplants. What does that mean? Well, their bone marrow was either filled full of cells of leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and those are the main kind of conditions, um, children, adults. And what they were doing is killing off the bone marrow that was producing the bad cells, then looking for donors, mesh donors, that could they could inject the bo uh, bone marrow back to replace the cells they killed. Then the next process would be to use chemicals to avoid the rejection process. Well, the problem here is, number one, let's say you have a disease. Well, first of all, find a, where, where are you going to find a donor? Is it going to be the right donor? How long is it going to, to, how long is it going to take? Then you have to take horrible drugs, to, which have their own problem. Now, I think this problem can be really resolved without political issues, religious issues, and it makes a lot of common sense. Is why not use your own stem cells? Where do we have our own stem cells? Well, it's been very well demonstrated they're in the bone marrow. They're in muscles. They're in fat cells. Actually, a very interesting story is a woman had liposuction, a Dr. Hedrick from UCLA, who I know, sort of company, uh, that took fat cells, took out, uh, extracted out of the fat cells, they found a certain amount of cells that could be actually transformed, they're kind of like stem cells, or, uh, into muscle cells, bone cells, brain cells, so on and so forth, and now he's got a, a big corporation doing this and doing a lot of studies. So, that leads me up to, let's say myself, in terms of, I, you know, I would like some bioinsurance, or maybe you would too, or, I mean, I think a lot of people do, that let's say we have some horrible condition. Well, what is the process to, let's say, harvest and bank our own stem cells? Well, first of all, we should all be screened medically. Do we have an infectious process? Do we have something maybe cancer looking like or some other condition which is not a good idea for us to either stimulate our own bone marrow or to maybe collect our own stem cells? Let's say we do the screening process and you're clean, there's no side effect, there's no, nothing wrong. And we really, and the second question is, who and when should you collect? Well, it's probably the earlier you do it and the younger you are, you're better off. So it's really, and when you're healthy, you're gonna have healthier stem cells, most likely. So the time to do it is now, the longer you wait, the longer you have a chance of a, a problem occurring where you maybe can't donate your own cells to yourself. So we've done the screening process. And as I mentioned before, you're fine, there's no, bad disease or infection. Number two is we want to stimulate our own bone marrow. How do we do it? We take a subcutaneous injection one, uh, two days in a row. 
It's a medicine called Neupogen. It stimulates our own bone marrow to produce more white cells, which is what we want, because those are the ones that can become stem cells. So after two days, you might, I mean, what are some of the side effects? You might feel a little achiness, like you, because your bone marrow is stimulated, like you just exercise or something, but usually there's not much really of a problem. So then you go and have a process called uh, apheresis, which means you're going to sit down in a comfortable chair and there's going to be a line in your vein and they'll be pulling out uh, blood and then separating your blood versus the, we call the white blood cells or buffy coat and red cells and they'll be collecting billions of these buffy coat white cells which when they reach a certain amount, you know, like in almost a liter or less than a pint or whatever, you know, there's billions and billions so you have a lot on reserve. Why do I say billions? Because I, had, I saved uh, from our last child, uh, a year ago almost, a quart of uh, blood cells. Well, there's some, yeah, there some stem cells in there, but that's only a few, it's like 300 million, and in many cases of autoimmune disorders, uh, leukemias, or degenerative nervous systems, you need billions of cells, and you may need pools of cells to see which cells work the best. So, then, let's say you've done the, the, the process, uh, now you have you know, once the cells are taken out of your system, it takes about three, four hours, then they are taken to the bone marrow uh, bank where they're frozen, separated, and they're also, there's, there's some processing done to make sure that they're all fine. And then they're banked and kept for your use uh, when you need them. Now, why bank at all? Well, the reason to bank is because, let's say in America, let's seven, let's, there's 700 FDA approved trials on adult stem cells going on at the moment. If you look around the world, we're probably talking about in the thousands of, of various stem cell research and government approved research going on. So, how close are we to actually making this a reality? Well, it's been just shown recently in Brazil that some young people had type 1 diabetes when they got their own stem cells back and put into the pancreas they were able to reverse diabetes type 1 where you don't make enough insulin. Now they're working on stem cells are being worked very closely for cardiovascular disease. People have been given stem cells for heart failure, for heart attacks, etc. And people have gotten better. Spinal cord injury, very Alzheimer's disease. There's tons of, and it seems to be one of the areas very promising at the moment when I review the literature is the area of autoimmune disorders. There are many autoimmune disorders. You can have Hashimoto's thyroid, you can have lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. There's millions of people suffering this all, all around the world, and that seems to be one of the areas getting ready to explode in terms of becoming available. But there are trials very showing really great promise. But on the other hand, I want to make sure that you understand that there's already established about 40 or 50 government approved reasons to use stem cells. And it's best to use your own from the different kinds of leukemias and lymphomas and myelomas and, and many other disorders, which can't, I can't even remember, but there's about at least about 40. And now we're adding to that 40, maybe another several hundred. So all in all, this is, this is no longer fantasy or fiction. This is reality. I'm pretty hot about this topic because I think it's really a valid, valid uh, thing to do. Uh, so I think banking yourself when you're young and strong, do it. Don't wait too long. And uh, in the end, uh, I wish you all the best of health and uh, that's it.